awesome. Okay. I apologize for being late. I, um, my husband and I did not do our schedules properly this morning. So I thought he was taking my little guy to speech and he thought that he was running errands. And that meant that I couldn't do a call that I had on time. So I had to be, um, so I was late. So I'm sorry. I am sorry. <laughs> you need a bigger cup. <laughs> so, um, we are going to talk about asking for the sale. So I want to talk about what that looks like and what it doesn't look like. I think that it's all in the wording. For me, sales is 100% in the wording. This is why I think it's really crucial um, to kind of listen and see how other people are selling. For me personally, the best training that you can get in how to sell something um, live would be to watch QVC. And while you're folding laundry or doing the dishes or whatever and listen to what they're saying and how they're saying it. That will be, um, it will give you some ideas for how to, yeah, you definitely, it's good to stock other reps too, but you also want to, okay, the reason why I say QVC is because QVC will give you unique ideas. Because if you're just watching other reps, a lot of times the ideas get recycled. And you know what I see happen? I see one of you guys have an amazing idea. And then I see um, four other people do the exact same thing. Even if it's, that's exactly my point, Erin. <laughs> if QVC can convince you that you need a pressure cooker, okay, when you just ordered a pizza, it, you need to, like, that's the kind of salesmanship we all need to be doing. So, the reason why I say QVC and I don't say other reps is because you want unique new ideas. And otherwise, the, um, exactly, otherwise the ideas just end up getting recycled from rep to rep. And even the best idea, okay, here's the biggest problem. Even the best idea that I have for my business and my group won't necessarily translate well for Felicia or Terry or Wendy or Laura or Jill. Jill it, Jill has an amazing group. Jill has amazing sales. But even if you copied her wording and her ideas verbatim, it's not going to read the same for your group because you're a different person. You have a different group. You have a different, you should have a different voice. So just listening to the way that people sell and kind of like, okay, when you, st when you find yourself going to pick up the phone to order something on QVC, you want to think, okay, what did they do or say that compelled me to make that purchase? Because at some point, they've literally asked you for a sale. They haven't just told you why you, you need something. They've literally asked you to make the, pur the purchase somehow. Now, it doesn't always sound like this. <clears throat> pick up the phone and buy this right now. As a matter of fact, that's probably the least effective way to ask for a sale. Posting on your personal Facebook page, go buy my stuff. That's asking them for a sale, but it's probably the least effective way for asking for a sale. So watching QVC specifically, because I think they do a really good job at it, will get you the verbiage that you need to ask for sales in a non-salesy way. The basic rule of thumb for sales is that if the person believes that your product will add value, okay, this is important. The more value that you, that your product is, is going to add to that person's life. So they believe, okay, the less important price becomes and the more important the, pro the, okay. So you, you start to add value into that person's life. This is what happens. Okay. This is the importance of the person making the purchase. And this is the importance of the price. Okay. So the more value you add the more distance there is between that person needing to needing to purchase it and the person's um, the person's price point sensitivity. So like let's just use the hurricane for example. Okay? It is your price sensitivity to something that you require in a hurricane is less than if there was no hurricane. 
because you don't see the value that it adds. If you see a value that adds to your life, the price is less sensitive. Um, another example is, is private school, for example, any of you guys that have, have kids. If you see that the value that private school adds is great enough, that price point, not that big of a deal. But if you don't see the value that it adds, if there's no value there for you, that price is going to make, it could, it, th that school could be a hundred dollars a month. That price point, you won't be worth it to you. You won't pay for it. So what you need to do, that's right. What you need to do is you need to be able to show your customers that you've added value. This is one of the reasons why I started doing those capsule sales and the outfits because showing somebody that they can dress easily and quickly with less money added value. And so their, um, their tolerance for spending money was lower or their tolerance for spending money was higher. So they had a higher tolerance for spending. So they spent more because I showed them that by spending more, they could save time and ultimately save money, which really is kind of the ultimate um, sales tool when you're talking about something like this that is people can classify clothing in their mind as a need but it also is a want, right? Like, do you like need a ball skirt? No, but you do need clothing. You do have to be covered somehow. So women are able to justify clothing purchases as needs or wants, depending on how badly they want it and where they perceive the value to be added into their life. So that's that, those are those two points that you need to always kind of be thinking about adding more value. If you're getting a lot of people that are complaining about price point, you have not added value into that person's life. So you need to start looking at ways that you can add value. Talking about a premium item like a ball skirt or like a muse tunic um, or like a swing tunic, something that's a little bit more expensive, talking about all the different ways they can wear it and how it's going to last because of how they're going to be able to care for it and the type of fabric that it's made of and things like that, that will make that purchase more um, justifiable to the customer. The customer is going to be able to justify that purchase more in their head um, for those price points. For the lower price points, showing them the value of the piece that is value piece, showing that, and then talking about all the different ways they're going to be able to wear it, that again, now you've added value and the price point, you brought the price point down for that customer in their head. So I want you guys to all like, I, you guys should all be watching QVC now. QVC's rating should just like go <laughs> through the roof. There should be 700 extra people watching QVC today. I want you just to be, I want you just to stick QVC on. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what they're selling. As a matter of fact, the less interested you're, you are in the product that they're selling, the, the, the more that I would watch it. So like, let's just say that you're not like an outdoorsy person and they're selling outdoorsy stuff. That's the episode you should watch. Hey, Sharon, that's the, the hour that you should be watching because if they can tell you to buy a tent when you're not a camper, that's what you need to pay attention to. What about that process, that sales process? I'm dead serious. Hey, Jen, what about that sales process compelled you to want to purchase the tent? And what pieces or verbiage or like styles can you implement in your own business? Don't, okay, the best thing to do is, okay, this is, okay, this is also, this is also an exercise in discipline. Hey, Kelly. So, discipline is really hard. <laughs> really hard. Okay. Nobody knows that more than I do. Okay. Says the person that nearly went to the Starbucks drive through to get a pumpkin spice latte, which is not on my diet plan. Luckily, they were closed, so I wasn't able to get one. Discipline is really, really difficult, but discipline is also extremely important because if you're not disciplined, you're really not going to go, <laughs> you're really not going to go very far because <clears throat> discipline is required for all things. And one of the things that you should be working on discipline, just in general, just being a disciplined person. So what being able to watch QVC and not make a purchase is practicing discipline. So I want you to commit to watching 30 minutes or an hour of, of QVC. Now you don't have to sit down on the sofa and grab popcorn and eat it. You can turn it on while you're folding laundry or turn it on while you're doing the dishes or whatever. 
but have 30 or an, 30 minutes or an hour. This is like, it's training. 30 minutes of an, or an hour of QVC on so that you can be listening to it. You can't be playing on your phone at the same time, okay? That's not actively listening when you're playing on your phone. It won't work. You need the words to go into your head. But you can be doing a task while you do it. I want you to do it 30 minutes to an hour. I would do every day, you know, maybe two days. If you can't do it two days a week, that's fine. But do at least for like four or five days in a row. And I want you to implement some strategies, either verbiage or like um, kind of marketing tactics that you learn from watching um, that time in your Facebook group or on your lives. And then I want you to kind of use that to build like an overall strategy for your Facebook for your Facebook group or Periscope group or live sales or whatever. Mike and I were out yesterday um, looking at a couple houses and one of the real estate agents said to us, um, is it like QVC? And I was like, it's exactly like QVC. Um, what I do. So I think that that's a really easy way for people to relate with what it is that we do when we sell live um, and that you should be acting just like you would if you were a QVC commentator. The best part about it is that you get to do it from your house. You don't have to worry about going out into a studio or waking up at four in the morning. Um, but you should be acting just as professional as they're acting. And the reason why they're commentators, it's not just because, you know, they're good looking. A lot of them are good looking, but it's more about um, their attitude, their personality, and their sales abilities. They're all exceptional salespeople. So that is your homework. Now, that will help you with the rest of this. The rest of this is being able to ask for the sale. You want to find ways to do this. <laughs> tell him that, tell him that it's a, tell him that's a homework assignment. <laughs> this is a homework assignment. I, my, my trainer told me that I have to watch 30 minutes of QVC every single day. It's best to do this if you're home during the day and husband's at work, best to do this during the day. Okay. Husbands get very annoyed, and I highly doubt that he's going to believe you <laughs> that I told you to do it. <laughs> I love QVC. Love QVC. I haven't watched QVC in a long time, but I used to watch it. When I first started Agnes and Dora, I was still working overnights at a hotel, and I literally would put on QVC for about two hours a night because I could watch TV while I was working. So I put on QVC for about two hours a night. And there was any time that they had a fashion one, I would always watch that one so I could get some... Um, ideas or whatever, that's a good one to watch. If you see any of the fashion stuff, it's really good. <laughs> I know it's, this is, I know it's, it's very professional information. So you want to use that information to find, um, your own voice so that you can ask your group or ask your, um, your live audience for the sale without it being salesy. Because if you notice, one of the reasons why QVC is popular is because instead of focusing on selling, they're focusing on adding value. Okay, so that's the take home message from today is the more value that that product is perceived to add to someone's life, the less the threshold comes between that price threshold. This is why um, premium products can sell. I, a lot of times I'll hear people say, I can't sell that, it's too expensive. Listen. If Gucci can sell handbags for, you know, $10,000, you can sell a frill sleeve for 38. I promise. You just have an added value. And sometimes it might be that you don't believe that there is a value. And I I can't help you there. That's an attitude and a mindset thing that you have to work on yourself. If you're not believing that there's a value in these clothing, um you're never going to be able to to convince anyone that there is. Um, so if you're having a problem on that part of it, like I would say, get with your referring rep and see if there aren't some sort of, um, like mental blocks that you have that are kind of stopping you, um, from, from understanding the value that there is in the product. You can watch, watch any of the drawings. <laughs> I'm so sure. Yeah. I would say I would honestly, the most effective ones are going to be, um, the most effective ones to watch are going to be the ones for products that you don't think you're interested in. So if you don't like cooking, watch the cooking shows, um, you know, that kind of thing. The clothing ones will be good too, only because there'll be some verbiage in there with clothing and manufacturing and stuff that you can use in your actual, for your actual sales. Um, okay, so I wanted to spend the rest of the time just talking about, oh, look at that. There you go. 
see and you don't have to do twenty five thousand dollars but you can think of a way to do a giveaway so that people have to tune in every day that's a great idea make it make, you know what this is what it's about is taking ideas and making them your own copying ideas doesn't work but making ideas your own does work my husband always forgets to get me drinks when I ask him to get me a drink. I ask him to get me a coffee and I know he forgot it. Remember last time he was supposed to get me a Diet Coke and he didn't bring it? Luckily I have a bottle holder. The rest of it is, it could be, could be the, we the weather thing. You can always pop off and pop back on and see if that works. So the rest of the time I wanted to, um, I know I do. I do need a bell. The rest of the time I wanted to open it up to ask you guys how your 90 day restarts are going um, and to see if there's anything that I can help you guys with specifically. Um, because I, I, I'm sure that you guys have some some stuff that's coming up, you know, kind of up in your, your sales game. I know. It's just like... Hold on one second. Honey? Did you get me a coffee? I should have one shortly. You gotta ask for what you want. That's the other thing. If you don't ask for what you want, you won't get it. All right, I'm gonna give you guys a few minutes to answer, to ask questions. All right, so let's do question and answer. If you guys have any anything that's going well with the 90 days restart or anything that you feel like is kind of like blocking, like a roadblock, like, let's get those sorted out. Look at this cute, hold on, I'm gonna flip the camera around. Look at this cute little shirt I got for my kid. A little wish one. Isn't that cute? Isn't that adorable? Just cute little shirts. Questions. How is that possible? You guys PM me and email me all the time questions. Give me a hearts or a thumbs up so I can make sure you guys are hearing me. And then if you guys don't have any questions, I'm going to pop off because I have a few other things I have to do today. Peter, because I'm actually not even seeing any hearts or anything. I'm thinking maybe I froze. If you're seeing this, I'm not seeing any additional comments, so I'm going to check the um, Facebook thing real quick and see what happened. Somebody just texted me that I do have questions. I'm gonna pop on the Facebook thing. I'm not seeing I'm not seeing the questions on my phone, so I'm just gonna read them off my computer. Why is Facebook why is Facebook annoying? Why? Okay, I see. To start with the um all right i'm starting to see comments again okay well cool all right i'm going to start with the first one linda why did you have creepers on your facebook yesterday i thought your group was private linda i started my live on my business page and i shared it to my group which means that it was public and anyone could get on it if any of you guys were on my live last night it was brutal honestly that's probably the worst creeper interaction i've ever had since i started with the company 
Unfortunately. I'm so sorry. It's okay, babe. you guys are like worried about periscope because you're worried about creepers but on periscope you can block the creepers um, on Facebook you cannot <laughs> so and I actually I block I actually blocked them from my computer and they still were able to comment on my video um, so I don't even understand how that happens I don't even know how that is even possible um, so I'm gonna have to look into that a little bit but I will tell you, like, yeah, last night was definitely, that was the most distracting um, interaction. And it really distracted my customers. Um, I still sold quite a bit, but it really distracted my customers. Um, and there wasn't anything I could do about it. <laughs> so that was a little bit obnoxious. Um, you have to ban them as well as block them. Okay, cool. I'm going to have to figure out how to do that because I've not ever had that happen before. I've had one or two people, um, like, just come on that weren't shopping for clothes, but they weren't, they weren't, um... They weren't like rude or anything about it, but last night they were. They were getting like ugly last night. They were like they were like um, periscope creeper status last night. Yeah, there was a few. Um, okay, let me go back and see what else. I had many misbehaving creepers on periscope lately. Let's go. Okay. Wow, you guys all had questions. Okay, I'm sorry. I was like, okay, I have many fair questions. I'm gonna go. <laughs> Meanwhile, a lot of you guys had questions. Okay. All right. Um, I've been doing 10 minute lives, immediately sold 10 items. I've shown 10 times before. Cassie, that's awesome. Good. I'm glad that that's working. Fantastic. How is my 90 day launch is going? I Oh, look, a rabbit. <laughs> Linda. How do you feel about taking some inventory off the site? Stephanie, I love that idea. I love that idea. As a matter of fact, I'm actually um, doing some of that right now um, with my group. I'm actually completely taking my party site off offline for them so they can't access it. Because what I'm finding is that it doesn't matter that I have 2,000 pieces of amazing inventory. Um, they've been looking at this stuff, so it all just feels like old and stale, even though it's amazing. And they're just not, they're just not buying like I want them to. So I took my whole site. Love it, Stephanie. I, I love that idea. I took my whole site offline for several days. You guys, I've had Pixie Pants on my website since Pixie Pants were released. I bought a run, I brought five in every size, and then they were they were around for a while. You guys, they were available to buy for quite a while, and I kept stocking up. So at one point, I had like 20 in every size, um, and I knew at some point that they would, um, you know, not be available for a while, so I really bought up. So I had a really good selection of Pixie Pants. Well, they weren't buying them, and I'm like, they're so cute. Why are they not buying them? I took my whole site offline for a while, and last night I did a Pixie Pants sale um, with some top suggestions, and I sold out of Pixie Pants from size um, large through 3X. So um, that was crazy. Um, but I So it definitely works. And Stephanie, you know, that is, a, that is something we can learn from LuLaRoe. Having your inventory available for people to look at all of it all the time, not a great idea. Um, I think that severely editing severely editing what you allow them to see for a long period and then adding stuff back in um, is definitely a really good idea um, so I'm doing that right now pretty much for the whole month of September and October I'm basically not a lot gonna allow my group to see all my inventory at once with very few exceptions um, and I'm gonna basically kind of like I'm gonna get them to buy what it is I'm selling at those certain times and then I'm also gonna leverage that to get some hostess parties on my calendar too because that'll basically be the only time that they can see all my inventory is during a hostess party. Um, so I will report back and let you know, but I love that idea, Stephanie. It's a great idea. Um, I've been doing great and feel much better doing lives. Fantastic, Terry. What is an example of asking for a sale? Tell me, sell me a cardigan. <clears throat> if you want to sell me, see me sell a cardigan, there's I have done quite a few um, cardigan sales, so I would do that. What you want to do is you want to add, which is what I was saying before, you're not saying buy this cardigan. You're giving them the value. That cardigan needs to create value in their life. So you need to give them examples of how, how many times they're gonna be able to wear this so they can picture themselves. 
this is the perfect thing to, to stick in your bag. That way, if you're in the movie theaters and it gets chilly or you run into the office and they have the air conditioning on too low, like you can grab this cardigan. This is something I would just like leave in my car. That way, if I'm ever someplace where I'm getting cold because I've worn a tank top, like now I'm now I have a cardigan to throw on. Plus, cardigans are really great because they're gonna ha they're gonna go down your body like this and it creates a longer appearance. So you're not going to notice that middle section and hips as much. Plus our cardigans cover your butt. So you're kind of creating this illusion of like long and lean, which is exactly what everybody wants. All that stuff added value to the cardigan. So now the price of the cardigan, not as important anymore because they want all the things I just told them that they want. So that, that equation, I just up with the thing and the value importance of the value decreases. So, um, what you would want to leave up is what you want them to buy. So if you're going to do this, what you want to do is you want to leave up what you want them to purchase. Obviously it would be a, it would be a poor choice for me to leave up only things that ha were, were looked, were felt really, really summery. That would look, that wouldn't be a good choice. So I would want to leave up a good mix of things that are kind of fall feeling, but also are really kind of more spring and summer. That way I can move through some of that spring and summer stuff with some of the newer fall pieces. So like spring and summer kind of feeling um, tops, but I've matched them up with fall feeling bottoms, that kind of thing. Um, go up. I love another training on online hostess parties. I'm starting to do online hostess parties. Um, Ashley, I'm literally just going to be posting about that today and sending out a newsletter about it today. So I will kind of train you along with when I, as I do it. So as I post, I'll kind of do a training in here about what I've posted, why I posted that, and how you could do it. So we'll kind of do it that way. I feel like hostesses really can be hit or miss no matter what you do, but I think that there's definitely a way to do it that's better than another. Okay, so I had an idea. There is this there's these girls called the tag team. I know a lot of you guys know who these girls are and they're direct sales. Now we're not a normal direct sales company. Our product is very different than a normal direct sales company, but these guys have a Facebook party formula that I think it's probably, um, I think there's probably some things we could really use in their formula. And I have not ever, I do not have a system yet for Facebook parties. So I was thinking about buying it and sharing it with you guys. And I think there's also a way that we can, we can sign up for like a team training. Um, so would you guys be interested in doing that? Because if you would, I would be happy to do it with you guys. There, um, the one thing is a, it's a tad bit pricey. I mean, but if it works, I feel like it would be worth it. <clears throat> okay. We can do that. Um... You recommend that I do album sales because my group is used to LuLaRoe. What is the easiest? And, the easiest and fastest way to do album sales is to um, is to either do ghost albums or have a different service post your um, your albums for you. And if you go into um, the team training page under album sales, Sarah B already did two amazing trainings on that. Um, and I would recommend using her system because it works. How do you push through depression to do something? Cheryl, you know, okay, I've never been, I've never been, um, I've never gone through necessarily, um, like a clinical depression. However, I have had a couple very significant, like, events in my life that have put me on a very, like, negative path. So a couple things are my dad was diagnosed with ALS, which is Lou Gehrig's disease, um, when I was 20, like five, um, and pregnant with my second child. So a bad cancer where like, maybe you'll get better. You just die. Like, that's just what happens. So that was really hard, um, for me to deal with. And I probably the whole time that he was, the whole time that he was dying for two and a half years. I was really just kind of like, I had a very hard time relating to people because everybody was like getting upset about stupid crap. And I'm like, well, at least your dad's not dying of ALS. You know what I mean? So I wasn't necessarily depressed, but I had a very hard time, like just kind of 
just being with like regular people that like weren't that didn't have like tragedies um going on in their lives because I just found that every day kind of like chatter that we all do I just couldn't I couldn't do it anymore um and probably I was fine like a year after he died and kind of back to normal so it was like three years of weirdness for me um and then and I honestly I didn't really do much for myself in those three years um you know I think that I just kind of allowed myself to like I don't know I mean I hate to minimize it by saying I was throwing myself a pity party but I kind of was throwing myself a pity party um because and I know that my dad wouldn't have wanted me to do that my dad would have wanted me to use like I use it as an excuse to like um quit college and like I was I was pregnant but I was also in college to go to nursing school I just use it as an excuse to not do a bunch of stuff um but that's not that didn't help me and he wouldn't have wanted me to do that and looking back on it obviously I'm happy where I am now <laughs> and I would not be here had my life not gone the way it went but you know at the time that you know sticking on the path that I was on would have been the healthiest thing for me to do and then um, we also had um, a little bit of a unique situation where we were in a community that had a national tragedy happen. So we were in um, Newtown, Connecticut, obviously, where the school shooting happened. And because of the, the friends that we had since my oldest son was um, a, little, a little boy, we, um, we have many friends that were... Um, severely impacted um like beyond what you could even like imagine and I mean there's just nothing that's important anymore when stuff like that happens um and I think that what I've seen my friends kind of go through I just feel like if you're not living up to your full potential with what you've decided to do with your life you're really wasting your life and it's kind of like a slap in the face to people that have lost theirs because they don't get to do it like they don't like I get to do things with my children that my friends will never get to do again because they don't have theirs anymore and so if I don't use what I have to give my children what I want to give them like I'm really just kind of wasting it and that's crappy because other people don't get to waste it. And I know that when you're in the throes of, you know, um, I know when you're in the throes of something that is um, going on up here, we can't always use this to rationalize our way out of it. But the truth is, is that no matter what has happened in your life with you, um, you if you're still here and breathing, like you don't get to waste your life you're just not allowed to do that because <laughs> it's not fair to you or for your family or for any of the people around you um, for you to waste something that's been given to you. So I think that the most important thing is finding people that you can talk to, but then also not allowing for that to become, to define your whole life. Because just because something kind of crappy or, you know, not nice has happened, or just because everything isn't going the way we want it to go doesn't mean that we get to like wallow in that you know and just kind of go in the corner and like cry um you know we have to kind of just be able to work through that so i think the most important thing is finding people that you can talk to but also not allowing it to like be your identity and define who you are um and sometimes it's a situation where we need to you know we need to get professional help because there can be you know there can be chemical imbalances that we need to be working on um, and that can't always, you know, it doesn't always happen just with talking to people. So acknowledging what's going on, I think is the most important thing, because if we try to pretend like everything's fine, everything's fine, everything's fine all the time, like that just doesn't work. Um, and I think when you're in that situation, you have, you tend to, um, thank you, Beth. I think sometimes when you're in that situation, we tend to look at other people's lives, like on Facebook or whatever, and we think, oh, they're it's so perfect for them. That's not true. Nobody's life is perfect. Nobody's life. And honestly, sometimes the people that are on Facebook acting like everything's perfect, they're the ones with the least, they have, they have the most stuff going on. And sometimes it's just because you want people to think everything's fine the more when it's not fine. 
Um, so for me, I just find power in just being honest about it and just kind of saying what's going on. Like when I, when my husband was working the most and all the kids were little, I would have people come up to me all the time and like, oh my gosh, five kids, that's so much fun. And I was like, no, <laughs> it's not. I was, I literally would say that to them. I'm like, no, <laughs> it's a lot of things, but it's not fun. <laughs> Because for me, there's power in the honesty. And you know what would happen? But you know what they would say? They would, they, would, they would actually admit to me how they felt about their own situation when I said that. And a lot of times they would say, I'm, it's so amazing that you're able to just say that. And I'm like, because it's the truth. I love them. You know, they're, they're great, but it's not fun. Like, I would love to just be like sitting back and watching my old employee play lacrosse and like just be able to like, you know chit chat with the other mommies and not have to like chase everybody around and change dirty diapers and have poops smeared on me like that part's not fun you know and so for me I think just being like just being able to um you know kind of just be honest with yourself and other people I think is the is is the best um and fastest kind of route and then also just I had posted a couple days ago about being able to yeah that's it that's it also, just, I posted a couple of days ago, knowing, um, knowing when you need to take a break, but understanding that it doesn't have to be the end of something. I've seen far too many people quit things that would have been really positive in their lives, um, which is what I was talking about before when I was telling you that I quit school because, um, because they needed a break. Like I needed a break. I needed to take a break. I didn't need to quit. And I've seen, I've seen a lot of people, not just with Agnes and Dora, but with other things in their lives, I've seen a lot of people quit things when really they needed a break. If you're a homeschool mom and you're getting ready to send your kid to school because you're burnt out, you need to take a break first, not just go ahead and send them back to school. And all my kids are in school, so I'm not saying homeschooling is the way to go. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is that when you've committed to something, you need to take a break, okay? Not just move on. <clears throat> Uh, yes, Melissa, I agree. And you need to, you need to find, you need to find a professional that can work, that can work through that stuff with you guys. Um, so that is my, we kind of got off a little bit on a tangent there, but it might've been important for somebody. So we're just going to go with it. You never know when somebody, somebody needs some tea or something. Hard getting eyes on my lives. Okay. So Jane, are you on, are you on live, um, on your Facebook group or in your Periscope or on your business page? I had all my inventory posted in 10 minutes. That's right, Bethany. <clears throat> it can be a little, you know, the first time you do an album sale, it can definitely be work getting all of your inventory, um, loaded and ready to go, but it can definitely be a good. Uh, a good tool to use. You know, uh, there's a whole company that has trained. Okay, let's see what else I missed. Do you recommend I do album sales? Yes, I did. Okay, I think I got everybody. Does anybody else have any other questions that I did not, did that I did not get to? I had another girl wanting to try an additional shirt when I bought her dress. Okay. It's weird because when you look at it on the computer, it gives you the comments backwards, and when you look at it on the phone, it gives you them the correct way. So Christy, if you're finding that your group is not responding to live, to live actual sales, um, then I, I, I wouldn't necessarily do them, <laughs> um, because you don't want to spend time and energy on something, um, that you're not seeing bring any, um, success, but I would continue to go live because going live builds the interaction in your group and the, um, the algorithm and it'll force people onto your page. So if they're not buying from you live, I think um, the, the best thing to do is just to go on, do style guides. Every time you get a new box, do a preview. Um, 
do a preview of the item and then tell them how it is that they can purchase it. And then if you have, you know, I would probably every, like, maybe every other week, maybe I would try like a small little um, sale and see if you didn't start to get a little bit of traction. Because for a little while I had that, but I didn't have that after. Periscope is scary. Um, Periscope is definitely scary. So I did, Beth, I have a Periscope Facebook training group. If you're not already in it, um, tag your referring rep and ask her to add you to it. Um, so I would watch that to start. It's kind of like the basics. And then um, I think there's a, I think there's one or two in here also um, on Periscope. There's probably a couple. And then I would just kind of just get started. And then I would go from, I would ask questions as you're kind of finding, um, you know, as you're sort of stumbling into some, some roadblocks. I would, I would come and ask questions next. But after last night, I can tell you that I kind of miss Periscope because I can just. Do to that Periscope group. Okay. Any other questions um, or anything else that you guys are kind of um, seeing happen with your 90 day restarts that I can sort of adjust for you? Yeah. <clears throat> yes, I will say, yes, Bethany is right. I will say that I do, I, that, that does happen. In um, a lot of times it's the length of the sale and a lot of times it's too much talking. I had, um, I had somebody ask me for advice a couple weeks ago. Um, they weren't sure what they were doing wrong on Periscope and within 10 minutes, I mean, I could tell right away what the issue was. The issue was that, um, like in 10 minutes, there was only one opportunity to actually claim something. So they were showing a lot of things um, and they were talking a lot, but they had only given me one opportunity to actually claim a piece of clothing and nobody has time for that. Um, so make sure you're kind of, and like you can, if you feel like it feels like you're going too fast, just say like, I'm, I'm respecting your time. I know everybody's super busy. Um, it's better to fly through things with the number. I've actually seen people post, um, flash sales where they're not even on camera. They have leggings on a stack with numbers on them and they just pull them off. Number one, number two, number three. Um, there wasn't, there was a one hour time limit for a while on Periscope for like a week or two, but I haven't seen that that happen again. I was on the other night for longer than an hour and that didn't happen. Um, it's really weird cause I'm talking to you on here and I have my Facebook thing pulled up and I can see the delay pretty long delay today. Does anybody else have any other bath? It gets so much easier. Yeah, it really does. The more, hey Cynthia, the more that you're on, um, the more you're on, the more comfortable you'll get and the more you'll find your own voice. Um, and then you'll also, you know, you'll start to get a following. So you'll have a couple people on that you recognize. And so it'll be a lot more comfortable to be on there. At least with Periscope, you can block people, which I found, I found out the hard way last night on Facebook. Give you guys a couple, a couple more minutes to ask any questions or get anything. Um, if you have any ideas for things that you want to do, you want to kind of run by somebody, this is a good time to get those, those questions answered. Good job, Cynthia. Yep. You definitely want to, that growing the group is important. Getting new eyes on inventory. Have, this is a great time to be getting for getting hostesses. People's, um, people's schedules are kind of solidifying now that everyone's back to school. Watch the replay. care so much about about whether or not they were live or watching the replay um, they're probably watching the replay again for the time thing um, they're probably wanting to be able to control how much time they spend on it and if they're um, they're watching the replay then they can fast forward so I, if you're seeing that a lot of people are watching your replay or more people are watching your replay than watching live I would cater to the replay viewers 
I would talk during your live as if you're talking to replay viewers. Mm hmm What Andrea said about, um, about Periscope and cold market and then directing them to Facebook, this is exactly how I grew my, my Facebook group. And we talked about this on one of the last lives that I did. Um, I told you guys exactly how I grew my Facebook group and that was my one biggest thing. I've gone on BST, my family, friends, Facebook, I don't know where else. Um, there, there are so many BSTs you could be on. You could be on um, local yard sale sites, local mom's club pages, um, all the LuLaRoe B BSTs, all the um, Agnes and Dora buy, sell, trade pages, um, all kinds of different ones you could do. There's no time of day that's best for Periscope. It's really just going to depend on your, um, your schedule and what you can be consistent doing. sale is a win and that's the way to get three things sold is to sell one thing at a time and you know sometimes you'll wake up and you'll have a three-piece order on your party site and sometimes you'll literally have to go on Periscope and sell a piece and Facebook and sell a piece and you know post a bunch of outfits to sell the third piece there isn't Cassie there isn't but as you're when you're just starting out I would spend you know a minute or two talking so they can get to know you um, so you the, you'll develop followers when they start to know you and like you. Um, you won't develop the followers just by going on. Um, I think that's probably another big mist, like um, misnomer that I'm kind of, you know, I'm kind of seeing um, is just going on every Tuesday at 10 a.m. isn't going to get you followers. You're going to get followers when people start to know, like, and trust you. So you have to be yourself. I think going on and doing like a little chit chat. You know, like, hey, I've been with the company for one month. This is what I've learned. Or, um, you know, hey, this is how you style the dolman or whatever. That can help people to start to get to know you a little bit. You're not going on the, you're not going on the company LuLaRoe page. You're just going on buy, sell, trade pages that were set up for LuLaRoe. A lot of them don't have rules anymore. There's a ton of LuLaRoe buy, sell, trade pages that don't have any rules. A ton. And okay, you have to be careful when you're talking about body stuff because you want to skirt. Um, showing that you have insecurities like everybody else and being like self-deprecating because I've seen some, I've seen some people from the company go on Periscope and literally the entire Periscope show is about how they don't like their arms and they don't like their stomach and they don't like their legs and they don't, and honestly, it's like, it's just annoying. And it's, it's, it's a trigger for people. Um, so you want to be, you want to, you, you want them to see that you have insecurities like all of, like all of them, but you want to give them solutions. Like, Hey, I don't love my stomach right now, but the dolman makes me like, makes me feel really cute because it camouflages that area. And then it also like defines my, you know, my waist or my hips or whatever you say about it. So there's a way to talk about it so that you're showing them that there's insecurities without actually just, you know, making it about you. Because it's not really about you. It's really about the customers. <clears throat> so, Candace, the best way that you're going to do that is by... It's going to take a little bit because until, until you have a great solid inventory, the reality is, is that they're really not going to be loyal to you because they really can't be. You don't have enough supply for them to be loyal to you. So it could take, you know, six months to kind of get that in place. So while you're doing that, what you want to do is just provide really, really good customer service. Um, and be really friendly um, and kind of provide a safe place for them so that they continue to stay there. That's what you want. That's perfect, Cheryl. I don't like group loops at all. Um, I'm not going to say don't do them. Um, I'm not going to say that I don't ever think that they're... I don't personally like them. Um, I would not want to, um, I would not want to participate in that. Honestly, at this point, if I participate in a group loop, you guys would lose customers. That's all that would happen. Whoever I would participate in the group loop would just lose customers. Um, and that would be the same thing as if I did multi consultants. If I started doing multi consultants, the only thing that would happen is that, um, I would gain more customers and other people would lose customers. Um, so it's not, it, it would, I don't feel that it's a good, I don't feel it's a good overall marketing strategy because I think that 
really what we're doing is we're just recycling customers, but we want new customers. The, the best thing that could happen to you today is if you got one person that had never found Agnes and Dora before, if you could find, if you could sell one thing to that person, that would be a bigger success than you selling 10 pieces to 10 people that have already bought Agnes and Dora. Um, obviously I know financially, you know, you would, you would rather sell the 10 pieces, but for your business, it would be a better, it would be a bigger success for your business if you sold, um, one thing to a new person, to a new customer. So we can't find new customers by swapping them around with each other. Um, but I don't, I, I don't want anyone to feel like th these are your businesses. You guys get to make these decisions. I don't judge your decisions at all. If, if you've looked at the pros and cons and you feel like, um, it's something that you want to do for whatever reason or for whatever period of time, that is totally, totally your call. And I don't want you to feel like you can't talk about that or you can't, uh, you can't participate in those things. That is, we all respect your choices as, you know, individual business owners, but those are just my, my, you know, individual feelings about it. Now, if we're talking about, you know, early on and we're building those first thousand followers, you know, I stand by what I said the other live. I don't really care who those thousand people are. As long as they're warm female bodies, um, you know, I don't really care where they came from. So if we're talking about working on that, that first group of people, um, I don't have as big of a problem with it. Um, but those are not strategies that I would continue to use in my business. And I did do a couple multi-consultant sales early on, um, and that helped me build my group, but I, I've stopped doing those now. Um, you won't, you won't see me doing those at this point. Hey, Miss Cat. Harry, here's the thing. Even I'm not going to get everything. Okay. So Jill, Jill and I and Alicia, um, with maybe one or two other exceptions in the company have the largest budget for inventory in the company. Um, there's probably, you know, two or three other people that, you know, I don't know their names. Um, that that sell about what we do so even I'm not getting everything I'm not getting every skew in every size or maybe I sold it maybe I got it and I sold it the first time I, I bought it so don't worry about that one purchase worry about the overall purchases as long as you can keep that customer um, as long as you're kind of their their first go-to don't worry about every single purchase I have VIPs that'll be like I'm sorry, but I really wanted that skirt and you said you weren't getting it. I'm like, it's okay, boo. It's all right, love. I get it. I would want the red skirt too. It's, not, it's okay. It's not a big deal. So as long as you don't kind of create, um, like a feeling where like they feel weird about that with you. Um, and as long as you giving them a reason to come back to you for the next thing, you're fine. Um, that's right. Uh, Rep Connect woman came to my home, bought two things, ordered another item in her size, and another one is coming on Saturday. Perfect, Linda. That's awesome. Congratulations. Hey, Marie. I want to train my group to wait for the MC sale to see more inventory before they make a purchase. Um, Ashley, what's MC, babies? Oh, multi-consultant. That's right. Yeah. And... The shoppers at multi consultant sales um, are unicorn hunters, and we don't we don't like the unicorn hunters. Okay, unicorn hunters do not sustain your business. Hey, Erin, they're gonna swoop in. Okay, here's the thing. I would argue that I actually don't want any unicorn hunters in my group, and it would be a better idea for me to have zero unicorn hunters in my group than to have half my the members. The reason is, is because that unicorn hunter is going to be your person that's going to, she's going to bug the crud out of you on PMs looking for one pair of leggings. And you know what's going to happen when you finally find that pair of leggings? This happened to me just the other day. She's going to say, oh, I already found it. You know why? Because she posted in 20 other people's groups that she's looking for that pair of leggings. She had 20 of us running around, knocking ourselves out, trying to find a freaking pair of leggings. Okay. That's the kind of customer a unicorn hunter is. That is not a that is not a customer that's going to sustain your business. Can you imagine how few sales you could do a month if that's how you had to do your sales? Mm -mm. You don't want the person that's going to swoop into your group, grab the one or two like special things, and then leave again. You don't want that person. You don't want them. 
You really don't. <clears throat> That's right. I didn't stock Fishers or Joplin's um, for a long time. I'm talking months. And I had many people, some of you guys have probably heard me say this. I had many people say, when are you getting Joplin's? I'm like, I'm not carrying those right now. I have a lot of dresses. I carry quite a few dresses. I'm not sure about the Joplin. I'm not, I'm not, I don't know if I'm going to like that. I'm not going to carry right now. I said that to people. And you know what they did? If they wanted a Joplin, they went and bought it from somebody else. I don't care. I'm not carrying those right now. Okay. It's just like if you walked into an ice cream store and you're like, hey, do you have grilled cheese? And they're like, I'm, we don't make grilled cheese. We make ice cream. Right. So you're going to go to, you're going to go to the grilled cheese store and get the grilled cheese. So now I sell all the Joplin's. So don't be afraid to tell people no. Don't be afraid to say, I'm not carrying that right now. Um, and you don't always have to find it for them. I, well, I'll never get rid of the in search of thread for you guys because, um, there definitely is, there definitely are times where we do need to be in search of things, but outside of the first month or two of your business, you guys really shouldn't be running around finding things for people. Um, that is not sustainable, um, a sustainable business model at all. Um, you are not going to be able to sell 10, 15, $20,000 a month if you're searching for individual piece of inventory for people. Um, you really need to just learn how to say, I don't have that right now. Um, and then I'll because that it's just not, it's just not going to work. Um, I do not, with the exception of me making an error, uh, I do not look for pieces for people. I stopped looking for pieces for people month to month. I, I was probably 60 days in when I stopped looking for individual pieces for people. And I never looked for leggings for people ever. It's never happened. I say, nope, I don't have those right now. Sorry. If you find them, grab them because they're really special. That's what I'll tell people. Mm -mm. All right, guys, I've got a couple minutes left because I have a, um, I have a tutorial with, uh, shipping easy. What if they are some of yours? I don't care who they are, Bethany. I don't care if it's a VIP. Mm -mm. I don't look for things for people. I do not. It doesn't, it doesn't matter who they are. <clears throat> I just, I don't, I, it's just, it's not sustainable. It is not sustainable. And if they want to spend, I have not found that the people that spend, the people that are my, that are my VIPs, those aren't the people asking me. For, to do that. It's the people that would literally only buy one or two things for me. Those are the people that would ask me for that. Okay, I've got time for like one other question then I've got to pop off because I've got a phone call. Wish shipping easy. I might be switching from stamps.com. Not sure yet. Have to see what shipping easy says. <clears throat> I can't figure out how to get it working. That's why I have a demo. I was going to say, that, yeah. So now I have, I have my VIP girls. They have, they do ask me for things. They'll say, hey, are you getting the gingham pants? Hey, are you getting this? Hey, are you getting that? Yep, I'm getting those. They're coming out on Friday. Or nope, I didn't get those. Sorry, I couldn't get them. Or I decided not to get those or whatever. So, I mean, they'll ask me for stuff, but I don't search for things for people. My goal is the same for the nine days reboot. I'm sick of no more it takes yeah that's right mm -hmm. and, and in the beginning what I what I had suggested doing in the beginning that was um that was the um personal shopping it still wasn't the same as what we're talking about here with the searching for items they they were saying to me oh I'd love a I'd love a curie and I would say to them I'll personal shop for curies for you. I will tell you what's available and you tell me which one you want and I will buy it for you. That's how it would go. It wouldn't say you go find the one you want and I'll hunt around for it. I didn't do that. I said, I can get these 10 curies in medium. Which one would you like me to buy for you? That's what I would say. So it's, it's a, that's a different, that's a very different conversation. Um, so even the first 60 days, I still wasn't, I still wasn't hunting for things for people. They're basically using, they're unicorn hunters, but they're basically using you to find their unicorn, um, which is, which is not cool. 
and they're not just using you they're using a bunch of other people too I'm an admin for a bunch of your groups and I cannot tell you how many times I'll get 10 notifications and it's the same person posting the exact same post in 10 of our groups do you have these leggings are you getting these tops are you getting this blah blah, blah? they post in all of our groups at the same time they're not interested in you or your time in your business they're worried about themselves and that's not a negative thing that's just human nature that's who they're looking out for there so that's that is definitely not I mean definitely not a way to sustain a business model at all if you want to sell anything you know more than a couple thousand a month all right I have to go you guys I've got to go get ready for this other call so I can figure out if shipping easy is worth it worth the switch um, I am going to pop off. If you guys have any follow-up questions or ideas, post them here in this thread. I'm going to, um, I'm going to copy this video into the event tab, um, so that we can continue on our 90 days. We're almost at day 15, so it's been two weeks. So hopefully you guys are, hopefully you guys are here. Yep. Isn't that, see, that's a, that's a perfect way to do it with the Spencers. Two dresses. Yep, exactly. Exactly, it's perfect. <clears throat> now, what I will, what I have, to, what I have started to do is, if I'm selling live, okay. So let's say I'm selling live, and I sell this, and I have somebody else try to claim an extra small, and I'm like, oh shoot, I only had one. Okay, I will say, hey, I think I can still order that. Go ahead and fill out my Google form, and just put next on the Google form and I will look when we get off and if I can order that for you I will order that for you tomorrow and see I order inventory pretty much every day I'll say I'll order that for you tomorrow or the day after when I order inventory and when it comes in I'll invoice you um, and then we can do it that way now for me I'm most likely already replacing that inventory so I'm pretty much already gonna order an extra small whether she's gonna buy it or somebody else is gonna buy it so it, let's just say she didn't pay her invoice for me and my business, that's not that big of a deal. I don't really care. Um, if it was a big deal, I would just remind her that that she would have to be committed to it because that I was ordering it specially for her, and so that when it came, it, you know, I was going to be sending it right to her. Um, so if if that was something that was if that was something that was going to be a budgetary problem for me, I would make sure I worded it in such a way that she understood that this wasn't like, you know, if you feel like you like if you still want it, kind of thing. Like I'm ordering it just for you, more of that kind of wording. Um, so I have been doing that and that's been nice because I can accommodate people that are on my lives and they're, they're staying loyal to me and they're coming on my lives, but somebody else claimed what they wanted ahead of time, but I can still get it. So that's been working. So you might want to try that if you ever have that happen. Anyways. Okay, guys, <clears throat> I'm going to go. Um, I will see you guys later Impl be implementing your 15 day, your, um, your 90 day restart thing. It's nice to watch all the trainings, but if you don't actually implement ideas, then none of it works. So I also want to say I'm really proud of you guys for all your sales. I know selling three things a day can definitely be, that can definitely feel like a hurdle, especially if you haven't been in the habit of doing that. So you guys have been doing amazing with that, and I'm really proud of you guys. So thank you guys for hanging out with me. If you didn't catch the beginning, go back and watch the replay. Um, I will see you guys later. Bye, guys.